Is it possible that Bonnie won't join the Straw Hats? Now, you might be thinking, wait, didn't you make a video saying Bonnie would join the Straw Hats? Yes, but also no. The main point of that video was saying how important Bonnie's Devil Fruit would be to the Straw Hats, but not Bonnie herself. Rather, I think someone else could be more significant to join the Straw Hats and pair as well with Bonnie's Devil Fruit. That person would be Carrot. Will Bonnie die? Why does it make sense for Carrot to join the crew? What's the connection between Bonnie and Carrot? And where could Carrot be currently in the story? These questions will be answered in this video. Hello and welcome to another fun theory. Most of my theories so far have been focused on memory and I want to keep on expanding on that. This specific theory is credited to Mr. Bushido who is a strong believer in Carrot for Nakama. I wasn't convinced about the Carrot for Nakama, but after Mr. Bushido looked at my analysis on the Straw Hat Crew's Devil Fruits to find the next crewmate video, he got inspired to create a really good theory that convinced me to believe in the Carrot for Nakama theory. In my crewmate video, I found out that Bonnie's Devil Fruit would be the best to join the Straw Hats because it has the properties of the human-human model Sun God Nika Devil Fruit. That's why I said Bonnie should join the Straw Hats. I also discussed that her Devil Fruit's name would be the Gora Gora no Mi. So you might want to check out that theory first before watching this one because I'll be referencing that video. But what if someone else got the Devil Fruit? It could be possible that Bonnie dies, but Oda doesn't like killing his characters. So another option could be duplicating her Devil Fruit through Vegapunk. Before we get into the carrot stuff, I want to look at the hints for why Bonnie's Devil Fruit might be replicated. The Devil Fruits that Vegapunk analyzed before were mainly Kuma's and Kaido's Devil Fruit. He also replicated Devil Fruits such as Kizaru's Light Devil Fruit or using Green Blood for the Seraphim. But for now, let's look at Kuma's and Kaido's since we know the most about those. Vegapunk mentions that a scientist figured out that the weight of a soul is 21 grams and that Kuma's Devil Fruit can extract pain, or in more scientific terms, the transmission of nerve signals, in order to create a physical form of it. He hypothesized that the memories and imaginations could have mass and volume. Actually, we have seen before that memories have mass and volume. Pudding, when she kissed Sanji, had extracted his memories as a movie tape, which she held in her hand proving that it exists physically. I also talked about in my Afro theory that the jewels that fall out of Vegapunk from Bonnie's ability represents age or the memory lost. These memories take physical form as well. So how does Carrot relate to this? Carrot looks at the full moon to gain memories from her ancestors. So if Carrot uses Bonnie's powers, she would be able to harness the powers of Bonnie's devil fruit to make her take in memories to turn into her Sulong form. Go check out my Afro theory which I explain how Afros are memories, but I also explain how the minks were taking in memories from the full moon and those memories relate to age because when the fishmen took the energy steroids, they grew old as a side effect, meaning just like the minks, they took in memories to become stronger, but they can't control them as well as the minks do, so that's why they turned old. So if the minks are taking in memories and Carrot is able to use Bonnie's aging powers, she could unlock her Zulong powers whenever she wanted. Vegapunk replicated Kaido's Devil Fruit, so we know that he can replicate Zoans and Paramecias. But Vegapunk, being a perfectionist, was unsatisfied that Momo's Devil Fruit was pink and deemed it a failure. Momo was also a tiny dragon when he was a child, but grew old by accelerating his growth and taking in memories using Shinobu's powers. Vegapunk is looking for an energy source that is all around them that can be harnessed if it was transformed into a more accessible power. So he might have an epiphany when he realizes that his work on Kuma's memories and observing Bonnie's powers that the unlimited power source is memories. I think memories is what Vegapunk is trying to harness and Bonnie's devil fruit might be key to this. That's why I think he will replicate Bonnie's Devil Fruit. It could be possible that when Vegapunk replicates Bonnie's Devil Fruit, it will be slightly different in an aspect, just like Kaido and Momo's Devil Fruit, so it's not a direct copy. As Vegapunk says, Devil Fruits hold the dream and desires of people. It could also be that the Devil Fruits hold imagination in a physical form, with mass and volume as well. So why is Carrot so important instead of Bonnie? The Minks are people that gain a Sulong form when they look at the full moon, and the first person we see who turns into Sulong was Carrot. This Sulong idea originated from the dark spots of the moon, taking an image of a rabbit pounding mochi. 
Oda has also been dropping the story in cover pages a few times, so it must be important to the story. Gyokuto, which translates to Jade Rabbit, is a mythological story about a rabbit who lives on the moon. The story is about a rabbit who spends all day making mochi, but in other cultures, it can be interpreted as creating the elixir of eternal youth. If Carrot would get Bonnie's devil fruit, she would make people youthful in the story with their powers. You might be saying that Law's powers make more sense because of the eternal youth surgery. The story is about three animals, a monkey, fox, and rabbit, that wanted to help an exhausted old man who's disguised as the Tasha Kuten, one of the lords of heaven. The monkey gathered fruits and nuts from the trees, the fox gathered fish from the river, and they fed the old man. As hard as he tried, the rabbit, however, could not gather anything more value to give to the old man. Lamenting his uselessness, the rabbit asked the fox and monkey for help in building a fire. When the fire was built, the rabbit leaped into the flames so that his own body could be cooked and eaten by the old man, meaning that the rabbit sacrificed itself for the old man. This is just like how the Opie Opie Devil Fruit needs a surgeon to sacrifice themselves to do the immortality surgery. So Law's Devil Fruit, after he dies, might go to Carrot if she doesn't join the crew, since Oda hints at Law's Devil Fruit being used for the immortality surgery, because his Devil Fruit would connect well with the story of the Moon Rabbit. But a more interesting Devil Fruit would be Bonnie's Devil Fruit, because Goro Goro would go well with the numbers of the Straw Hat Devil Fruits adding up to Sunny Go. Not only can she turn herself and others youthful, but also turn them older. This is important because I covered in my laughter theory that the Sulong access memories of their ancestors, filling their bodies with age or memories by looking at the moon. So if the moon is needed to access these ancestral memories, wouldn't it be more convenient if she could harness the power of her Sulong form whenever by turning herself older? Also in Whole Cake Island, we see Stussy, who we recently found out to be a clone of Miss Buckingham Stussy, who is dressed very similar to Whole Cake Island Carrot with a white hat and similar hairstyle. We learn that she has been youthful for a long time, which might be a hint at the connection of the moon rabbit and the elixir of eternal youth. Some other things that point to Carrot getting a time-related devil fruit is that she is the only one that can go back and forth from the day and night cycles of the minx. If she were to join the crew, it might be that we see a normal youthful Carrot during the day and a Sulong or aged Carrot during the night. Go check out Gaburu D. Rat's Twilight Bunny Theory, where he talks about Carrot and her possibility getting a time-related devil fruit. But why would Carrot get this type of devil fruit and not something else? Oda said in an SBS that Zunisha was a Netimi Norida elephant, which was inspired by Salvador Dali. Dali created amazing paintings, but there's two I want to focus on. The first one being the elephants, which show these long-limbed elephants carrying obelisks, which correlates to Zunisha carrying a road poneglyph. The second one is a more famous painting known as the Persistence of Memory. His melting clock imagery mocks the rigidity of chronometric time. I definitely knew what that meant. This might show that Carrick might get a time-related devil fruit connecting back to the moon, rabbit, and the creation of the elixir of eternal youth. Both of these images were based on surrealism. Surrealism was a means of reuniting conscious and unconscious realms of experience so completely that the world of dream and fantasy would be joined to the everyday rational world in an absolute reality or surreality. Andre Breton, the main spokesperson for the Surrealist movement, saw the unconscious as the wellspring of the imagination and defined genius in terms of accessibility to this normally untapped realm, which he believed could be attained by poets and painters alike. With all these people not related to One Piece, you might be thinking that there's no way Oda would know about Surrealism. But isn't the definition of Surrealism what One Piece is all about? When I think about One Piece, I think about the expanding world building, the wackiness of the character designs, and the depth of the story. Oda is literally accessing the unconsciousness, dreams, and imaginations of himself by creating this manga. Luffy's Gear 5th is also proof of what surrealism is, the accessibility to this normally untapped realm. Even awakenings are literally the alignment of the mind and body to harness the full untapped potential of a devil fruit. Surrealism allows one to create dreamlike worlds in the form of art. Make sure to like the video if you're enjoying so far. It really helps spread my channel to other people and all you got to do is click. Now let's get right back into more Carrot connections. Another reason why Carrot might join is that Carrot and Luffy are similar in mannerisms. It's like she's a female Luffy. Both are very energetic people who like to run off and go on adventures. We can see this when Luffy jumped off Zoe and landed on the ship. Everyone on the crew was nearly dead, even Brooke. Yo! Yo! 
But meanwhile, Luffy is standing there yelling at them to get up and stop being so dramatic, then points to Carrot telling them to be like her, who at the time was like Luffy and not affected by the giant fall, and was jumping around with glee that she managed to get off so. Both of them are also totally obsessed with food. For Luffy, it's meat, and for Carrot, it's of course, carrots. But she also has a thing for sweets, like chopper, such as chocolate. In Wano, when Carrot hears Parasparo's voice, she runs off, and her sprinting is similar to Luffy a few scenes later. At the end of Wano, it's also stated by Oda that Luffy's new favorite dish from Wano, specifically, is Odin, which is the same as Carrot's. Oda is emphasizing the connection between Luffy and Carrot. She's her own person and not a complete cone of Luffy, but she definitely fits well with the crew. If you're still not convinced of Carrot getting Bonnie's fruit, why does Bonnie hate Carrot's? What if Bonnie's devil fruit is in the shape of a carrot and that's why Bonnie hates carrots because we know devil fruits taste bad. If Bonnie's devil fruit was not replicated perfectly, it would be a smile and not look like a carrot. So that might be why another option might be that Bonnie dies and the devil fruit respawns in a carrot, which carrot would accidentally eat. Even though Mr. Bushido and I don't want Bonnie to die, let's look at some death flags that have been showing up for Bonnie. The world government wants something to do with Bonnie, and we're terrified that she escaped before but now are in their grasp, implying that she was captured before and that her power is something terrifying to the world government. Additionally, Luchi with the CP0 agents said that they will end Bonnie when they arrived at Egghead, so it's possible that Bonnie dies on Egghead, or maybe her memories get stored away by Vegapunk to not technically kill off the character, so that her fruit reincarnates into a carrot. The world government would then have trouble getting Bonnie's devil fruit if it was in the hands of the Straw Hats, who are a Yonko crew. Even if somehow you're still not seeing the connections between Bonnie and Carrot, I have to bring out my pun cards. Bonnie's powers create jewels which came out of Vegapunk when she turned him into a baby. We discussed before about the weight of the soul and how imagination and memories can take form into physical matter. So, do you know what the unit of measurement for the weight of a diamond is? It's a carrot! The main carrot, who loves carrots, eats a carrot-shaped devil fruit which creates jewels that can be measured in carrots. Oda truly loves his puns. Even Bonnie's name sounds similar to the word bunny. One of the smaller ideas I want to point out is that Carrot has great eyesight and her role on the crew would be to be a lookout, which she has done before. But another small idea is to look at the trends of people joining the Straw Hats. The first group of four people, Zoro, Usopp, Sanji, and Nami, that joined Luffy are from the East Blue. The second group of four people, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, and Brooke, were from the Grand Line with three of them having devil fruits, which could be evidence for Frankie and not Carrot getting a devil fruit, but I think it's still Carrot with all the connections with Bonnie and her devil fruit. And the last group of four people will be from the New World, which is only Jinbei so far. So from this trend, I think it would make sense that the last four crewmates are supposed to be different races which are not human. So a fishman, a mink, an oni, and probably a giant or skypean would make the most sense. Jinbei being a fishman, Carrot being a mink, Yamato being the oni, and the last one being whoever the Straw Hats find in Elbaf or go back for in Skypea. So when would Carrot appear in the story? It could be that Carrot has been on the Straw Hats ship since Wano. We have seen instances where someone is a stowaway on the Straw Hats ship. Caribou is one of them, but Carrot also jumped on board the Sunny without the Straw Hats approval. After becoming the Duke of Mokomo Dukedom, she seems surprised that she was made the Duke by Nekomamashi and Inurashi because she has been carefree and childish this whole time, so she doesn't seem to be fit to be the ruler of the Minx. Even Odin, who left his country for adventure, was criticized for leaving his people unattended to suffer under the rule of Orochi and Kaido. Nekomamashi and Inurashi were also the ones who experienced this firsthand when they were on Wano. They even had day and night cycles because they blamed each other for the death of Odin. It would be irrational of them to make Carrot the Duke of Mokomo Dukedom after just being to a few islands, so it might be that they had an ulterior motive to maybe make her join the Straw Hats, similar to how Zeph kicked out Sanji so he can live out his dream of finding the All Blue with the Straw Hats. So Carrot, escaping her responsibilities as a Duke, once again stowed away on the Straw Hats ship in a barrel. This is referenced by Frankie's rabbit screw propeller on the Thousand Sunny, which is a barrel with rabbit ears. Oda is being a troll here, but it's possible that Caribou accidentally swallowed up Carrot when she was locked in the barrel because we know Caribou can swallow people back in Fishman Island. This is plausible because there's something called mal de Caribou, which is an acute form of malnutrition caused by a diet deficient in fat and carbohydrates, where almost all calories consumed come from the protein and lean meat. 
Another name, however, is rabbit starvation. Rabbits usually have lean meat on them, made by mostly protein. So when there's an excessive amount of lean meat consumed, people get malnourished and can potentially die. Hopefully you guys aren't planning on eating me. So if Oda really made this connection of Carrot, who is a rabbit, with Caribou, who connects to Mal de Caribou from the beginning, he is truly the goat of foreshadowing. One interpretation could be that Caribou literally consumed a rabbit, which would make him malnourished, maybe he encounters the vending machine created by Vegapunk, which makes food for him, or encounters a box of carrots, in which Carrot jumps out of Caribou and stuffs herself with carrots. Or maybe that Carrot gets out of Caribou somehow, and she's so malnourished that she needs something to eat, so she comes across a box of carrots where one of them turns into Bonnie's devil fruit. These are just ideas of what might happen, but I think it's plausible that Carrot might be inside of Caribou. Again, huge thanks to Mr. Bushido, who allowed me to make this theory about myself. Go check out his theory in the comments because he mentioned some other evidence, like how important the number 8 is to Carrot. I hope you guys ate that subscribe button, just like Carrot. All I need to say is that the start of adventure and the dawn of dreams begin with the barrel.